Good morning, everyone. My name is Desiree Clark Strong, Human Resource Officer of the Learning and Development Directorate of the Ministry of Public Service, and welcome to today's webinar entitled Best Practices for Handling Paper Based Public Service Records. I am your moderator for this webinar presentation and discussion, and it is brought to you by the kind compliments of the Learning and Development Directorate of the Ministry of the Public Service in collaboration with the Archives Department. Now, we will really like to hear from, hear from you and would like to include your voice in the conversation. But before we get there, here are some rules of engagement we would like to hear, we would like to share with you. We would like you to mute your microphone, disable your video, pause, minimize distractions as many as much as possible, share what you have learned in the chat, fully focus on the presentation, reflect on your own experiences and participate, participate. There is a time allotted for questions and answers. So type your questions in the chat box, share your comments. I will be monitoring that chat box and will share those questions in the question and answer session with the presenter. At this point, I want to introduce to you our presenter for this webinar. Our presenter this morning is Mrs. Stacia Adams. Stacia Adams is an archivist who has worked at the Barbados Archives Department for the past 17 years. She holds a Master's of Science degree in Archives and Records Management from the University of Dundee in Scotland. She enjoys reading, writing original poetry, and engaging in work at her local church. So sit back relax and listen to proceedings and remember any question you may have you can place in the chat box so that we can forward it to the moderator over to you to miss adams thank you for having me and a good well good morning to all public officers present and therefore all colleagues in addressing the topic best practices for handling paper-based public service records the areas we will be exploring include the definition of a record, the importance of records. We will then take a glance at safety and health at work. Next, the significance of record cleaning in the COVID-19 environment. We will then zero in on best practices for record cleaning. And finally, we'll focus in on the topic, best practices for record maintenance. After this, you'll get um, a chance to go into our question and answer segment. We'll now hit the ground running by first looking at the definition of a record. Now, according to the International Records Management Standard, ISO 15489, Part 1, 2001, it states that a record is information that is created received and maintained as evidence and information by an organization or person in pursuance of legal obligations or in the transaction of business. Now here in this first slide, you'll see a picture of some of the exam some examples of records that we hold here at the Barbados Department of Archives and that should be very familiar to all of us in the public service or most of us. There are um, official gazettes and they're held here at the Archives Department from as early as 1872, right up to present. Okay, now zero in on a definition of public records, which comes courtesy of the Archives Act, 1989 CAP 19B. Public records are any original or copy of any manuscript, paper, letter, register, report, book, magazine, map, chart, 
plan, drawing, picture, photograph, or machine readable record, or part thereof produced on paper or any other material except granite, and officially received or produced or prepared in any public office within the course of its official functions. Now, for you participants, what types of records are you aware of? You can drop your answer in the chat box. Okay, some answers coming in here. We have personal files, medical mm -hmm. files, minutes yeah. of meeting, financial, yeah. those are a few, vital. Okay. okay accounts. Yeah. So those are some of the answers that we receive. Good. Now, we have a host of other records, as you could well understand, at the Barbados Department of Archives. We have things like baptisms, marriages, burials, census records, wills, deeds, among, you know, the, the many others. So thank you for your, your participation. Okay, um, moving on, records are undoubtedly important because we can't work effectively or prove our identities without them. These particular slides, this particular slide will observe the significance of records as they are needed for evidence of registration of births, marriage, and deaths. We think about how much we would need these records when applying for, say, citizenship or for securing a passport. We also need records for personal identification. Think of your ID cards, your passports, your driver's license when asked for some form of photo identification. Records are also needed for commercial transactions. Remember such records as pay slips, utility bills, you know, for higher purchase payments and arrangements. We also need them to prove rights to property. We, we, what comes to mind are things like title deeds and wills. Records are also needed to settle legal disputes. One may need a proof will, probably even a, a divorce record or even receipts for um, proof of purchase. We need them as well to access government and private services. So, you know, we, we conjure up in our minds that we may need things like our ID cards, our driver's licenses, immunization cards, our books to access health care services for children. We also need records to ensure transparency and accountability in, within the workplace. And such records as licenses to operate, contracts, agreements, and policy documents come to mind. Records are needed as well for research and the fulfillment of academic qualifications. You think of those records that facilitate scholarly research, such as um, census records, plantation records, research papers, um, even dissertations, um, voters lists, inventories, and so on. They are also necessary to serve as the national memory of a country. Now, within the Barbadian context, there are things like um, the independence instruments, there's the Emancipation Act of 1834, and various House of Assembly and Senate debates, minutes, and laws. And records are finally crucial toward efficiently and effectively managing businesses as well as countries. Business continuity, and I would also say state or country continuity, is not possible without records. We need human resource files, we need procedural manuals and legislation to function effectively. Now, um, moving on, what are some of the vital records within your ministry, department, or agency of government? Just drop that answer in the chat box. The question again being, what are some of the, to our participants, what are some of the vital records within your ministry, department, or agency of government? Okay, coming in, we have personal leave, contracts, policy decisions, reports, Book orders, legal files, leases, records management case files, pay sheets, account summaries. All of these are coming in from our participants. Yeah, fantastic. And those are yeah. really, really good um, answers. So we arrive at our vital records. 
And these are those type of records that organizations cannot exist without. In short, businesses need these records for continuity purposes because of their evidential value. So in short, they provide evidence on how the institution is run. And such records would include things like um, minutes of meetings, policy and procedural manuals, manual annual reports, strategic planning documents, photographs and diaries that um, record major decision making processes. So administrative records are one such type of vital records and these are records that would facilitate the smooth operation and management of, in our case, a ministry, department or agency of government. Next we have um, another type of vital record. We have legal records and these records pertain to the legal and rulemaking processes of an institution. And such records would include things like memos and articles of association. We have bylaws, rules and regulations, contracts, agreements, wills, deeds, registration of patents, licenses to operate, instruments of appointment, and instruments of delegation of authority. Moving on to financial records, another type of vital record, which um, these particular records would pertain to the accounting and the financial processes of an institution. And examples include financial statements, return, audit reports, statutory reports. As, an, as public officers, we would be familiar also with capital estimates, vote books, expenditure vouchers, and so on. Okay. Now, within the public service of Barbados, there's an act that seeks to safeguard public officers against risks to their health and safety on the job. And this is known as the Health and Safety at Work Act 2005. And I'm just bringing this act to your attention as a foundational reference point to proceeding topics. So we'll now explore the hazards of dirt and dust to records. Once a volume, say a cash book or a vote book or whatever, or file is used, dirt and dust sitting on the covers can be transferred to the text. And pets such as um, silverfish, wood lice, carpet beetles may feed on this dust on the record surface and by extension the pages of the book. So in so doing, these pests can consume and hence erase pages upon pages of valuable information. Another factor to consider is that dust may contain mold spores that have the ability to germinate and grow on the record, particularly the covers. And this mold growth can also bring about the physical degradation of the record. So those are some hazards of dust to the records. Moving on to our next slide, health and safety risks to record users. It goes without saying that dust on paper-based records can pose a serious health and safety risk to record users, inclus inclusive of our staff and clientele within the public service. The fact exists that dust, partic that dust particles small enough to be inhaled sitting on records may cause some such complaints as irritation of the eyes, coughing, sneezing, hay fever, and asthmatic attacks. And it must also be noted that even small increases in dust concentration can worsen such respiratory conditions as asthma, chronic obstructive airway disease, or emphysema. Let us now take a look at records as they pertain to the COVID-19 environment, this present pandemic environment that we are in. Okay, we have established that records are paramount to the running of any institution, government or the private sector, whatever institution. Although we in the we're in the technological age, the vast majority of our records within the public service still exist in paper-based format. Um, because records you know, are the lifeblood of an organization, it's inevitable that persons must interface with them physically by touching them as they would need to read and attach signatures and date to them, do it, date to them on occasion. Now consider the records we consult and sign off on on a day-to-day -day basis within government. Think of things like circulars and memos, vacation forms and so on. 
focusing now on the impact of record cleaning in the COVID-19 environment. According to the World Health Organization, one of the ways in which the coronavirus is spread is through surface surface transmission. And this means that an individual can catch the virus if he or she comes into contact with a surface, with a surface, um, with droplets from the sneeze or cough of a person infected with COVID-19. Uh, so this particular factor emphasizes the necessity then of ensuring that not only members of staff and clients are masked and well sanitized, but that records are properly cleaned as well. Our own public service records are properly cleaned. So following are some basic protocols instituted by the Barbados um, Archives Department in this COVID, this current COVID-19 environment. Now the Barbados Department of Archives or the Barbados Archives Department, I should say, requires that researchers submit to temperature checks, that they wear masks, they wash their hands before consulting records and published source materials. And the department also currently functions via an, an appointment system in an effort to limit the number of persons interfacing with records on a daily basis. All right, we proceed on to best practices for record cleaning. Let's examine first the topic of hiring professional record cleaning companies. The importance of the information contained in records should, you know, incite our spur ministries, departments, and agencies of government to enlist the services of reputable and professional record cleaning companies. Following are some of the attributes of any good record cleaning company things that we should look out for. So a good record cleaning company should use, first use the correct cleaning methods. Records should be cleaned page by page, inclusive of the crease, the covers, the spine, in, the, in relation to books. The second point being a good record cleaning company should also seek to use the correct cleaning equipment, such as um, HEPA, HEPA filter vacuums or high efficiency particulate air fil filter vacuum cleaners and cheese cloth, which is a very, very delicate and fine cloth for especially fragile pages. They should also avoid the use of chemicals unless we make an exception for Lysol for the cleaning of mold infested materials. And a good record cleaning company will also endeavor to clean in an environment where staff will not be directly affected by the cleaning process. An important point to note is that it is recommended that record cleaning within the public service be conducted or um, carried out once every six months, but no less than once a year. And be sure to contact the Barbados Archives Department for the contact details of recommended record cleaning companies. Okay, our next slide, this next slide provides a look at some of the common PPE or personal protective equipment or safety and health equipment used in the record cleaning process. These items include um, things like dust masks, you have rubber gloves, ensure that you have gloves um, that won't impede dexterity when you want to turn pages to complete the cleaning process, of course. There are also lab coats or coveralls. There's a protection such as goggles. There are respirators, like the, the, the very famous and popular double, double nozzle respirators. And of course, there are boots, but these are used in cases where you have to deal with a particularly unsanitary environment. Continuing on in terms of cleaning equipment, so we see things such as um, items such as vacuum cleaners, dust cloths, large tables on which to clean. Um, also record storage boxes, their large plastic bags, clean loose print for cleaning particularly dirty records on, as well as a tent. You would see cleaning, professional cleaning companies using a tent or tents with side in, in, in the case of rain. The tent in itself is needed in the event that a covered area for cleaning is not readily accessible or available. 
Okay, we'll now briefly observe two tried and true cleaning methods, that of dusting with a soft cloth and then dusting with a vacuum and soft brush. The emphasis being on soft because you wouldn't want to corrode and erode records. Now, beginning with the topic of dusting with a soft cloth, we must be mindful that the cloth should only be used for wiping shelves. And that, of course, is this um, storage equipment on which um, records are placed, especially bound volumes, boxes of files, and what's not. They should, the cloth should not be used for surface cleaning of records or for wiping textual rec records. Those are records with um, documentation or writing. Um, or photographs. This action can prove abrasive and damaging to records. Moving on to dusting with a vacuum and soft brush. Now, before proceeding with this type of cleaning, you would first ensure that records are in a good physical condition as you definitely would not want to brush brittle, rec particularly brittle records because they may degrade, they may fragment, and you would run the risk of losing valuable pieces of information. In relation to um, bone volumes, first the exteriors or the covers are clean to remove surface dirt, then the edges that form the text block when closed, and the interiors should also be dusted. When cleaning inside of a bone volume, say cash book, a vote book, whatever have you, um, in order for cleaning to be a thorough process, it must be done page by page. Cleaning should begin at the very methodically at the center or the crease of the record and extend out across its edges. One hand should be used to hold down the paper surrounding the area being cleaned in order to prevent the, tape, the paper from moving, from crumpling or from tearing. And it must also be noted that before reboxing or placing records back into um, folders, or say file jackets, those latter mentioned enclosures as well should also be cleaned by way of dusting with a soft cloth to avoid the transfer of dirt during handling. Okay, we will focus now on two degradation processes that you may have encountered at some point in time, if, if ever, namely red rot and mold. Now, red rot is a degradation process specifically found in leather that has been vegetable tanned. And it occurs when the leather is exposed to temperatures beyond what it can handle, as well as high relative humidity, um, environmental pollution, or simply from prolonged storage. And we see um, evidence of red rot here at the archives because we have um, certain records, deed volumes that are leather bound. And you know, this particular degradation process um, is not foreign to us. Now, red rot normally appears powdery with a felt like consistency to the touch, and the leather's weakened, weakened structure brought on by this particular type of degradation tends to bend easily. The archives department should be contacted for recommendations regarding the treatment of this particular process, this red rot. Yeah, the next type of record degradation to be examined is mold damage or infestation. Now, mold is generally pervasive. Mold is uh, existent everywhere. Um, and its spores are present in all surroundings, remaining dormant until the right conditions for germination arise. Under the most favorable conditions, such materials as paper, leather, and adhesives on, on books our records will nourish mold. Keep in mind that mold has a tendency to thrive in areas of high relative humidity. So once there's a lot of water vapor and poor air circulation, um, you could see mold, mold may, may very well thrive. Okay, with regard to the treatment of mold, there's a preference for non-chemical methods as opposed to chemical methods since records and by extension record users, us in the public service and our clientele should not be sub subjected to chemicals or fumigants which should prove 
harmful. It is best to identify and isolate moldy records by sealing them in polyethane, poly, yeah, poly, polyethane bags or plastic bags. Um, we should also be mindful that when handling moldy records, the approved PPE or personal protective equipment should be worn. So such items as respirators, eye goggles, gloves, and coveralls should be worn. Continuing in the vein of non-chemical mold treatment, the following actions should be undertaken. You should first seek to identify the moisture source, that is the area of high relative humidity, whether it be a damp wall or dripping tap, and seek to eliminate that particular risk. If the files or the records are damp, they should be dried, and the infected items should be thereafter laid on paper, placed on tables outside in the sun or in a room with a fan because mold thrives on very damp conditions. Lastly, in the final attempt toward mold remediation, the humidity in the room should be kept below a relative humidity of 50% in order to dry the records sufficiently. A dehumidifier or ultraviolet light lamp can be used to dry the records as well. Once thoroughly dry now, the moldy records should be vacuumed with a HEPA filter vac. Uh, you would know this, um, this abbreviation by no. High efficiency particulate air filtered vacuum cleaner. And the vacuums filter, um, this, this special vacuum filter ensures that the mold spores are not recirculated around the room. Following are some attributes of a good record cleaning environment. Now, a good record cleaning environment should be clean, first off. It should be dry. It should be well ventilated. There should be a flat work area, like a, a large table on which to clean. It should also be spacious enough to allow cleaners to handle records properly during the cleaning process. Um, the necessary cleaning equipment should be on hand. And if there's going to be on-site off -site record cleaning, the area should be one, the site should be one that is secure and well monitored. You know, it should be a very secure um, storage facility and what's not. We move on to into the realm of best practices for record maintenance. Okay, and now here are some tips for the proper handling of records. Records should be handled with care, preferably using clean, dry hands. And it goes without records. We shouldn't eat or drink around records. Um, gloves may be used to protect documents from dirt and grease. Though care should be taken, taken with thin and damaged papers, since gloves, particularly um, cotton gloves, so if you're using cotton, you know, um, they can re reduce user sensitivity and the dexterity. The rubber gloves are preferable, very thin ones. Um, we should also, in the proper handling of records, ensure that files are no more than two inches thick and are enclosed in proper file jackets. You don't want files that are too heavy because they can, um, cause the, the actual papers within the file jacket to you know, become bent and crumpled. Um, it also places a lot of stress on the file jackets as well. So um, registry staff, you, know, you should really take note of this. If paper clips are used, ensure they are plastic rather than metal. Or you could even, you, you can use the metal ones, the metal coated ones that are those ones that are coated with plastic the metal ones coated with plastic or plastic is acceptable okay continuing on with our key tips for handling records bone volumes with loose covers and damaged spine pieces must be kept in original order and handled with special care be sure um, when handling records such as files that you remove them carefully from filing cabinets, um, also from enclosures such as boxes, folders, sleeves, envelopes, and other records enclosures. The enclosure 
must be resting. It should be resting on a flat work surface and then open to remove the records. Um, items should be supported underneath by one hand and not be grasped or lift, lifted by one edge or corner. And the records should not be leaned on, written on, folded over, traced over, or handled in any way that is likely to damage them. Because you want these records, um, you know, in the execution of your duties, you depend on these. And from our perspective here at the archives, we want them for posterity. Um, our children and grandchildren, great grandchildren, all need to interface with these records at some point in time. Okay, at this point, we graduate to storage equipment and enclosures. Examining storage equipment first, we gather that storage equipment is furniture on which and in which records are stored. The ideal material from which storage equipment for paper-based records can be made is metal rather than wood. And this is so because wood contains acid and will therefore promote a harmful process known as acid migration to paper-based records. Some examples of storage equipment include such items as filing cabinets, book shelving, maps and plans cabinets, and microfilm cabinets. And there are, of course, suitable storage equipment for various record formats, of course, all made of metal, you know, um, for paper records such as bound volumes, or records in book format, um, metal shelving would be the would be more suitable. For instance, Dexian shelving. For files, there are of course the filing jackets. For such oversized records as maps and architectural drawings, um, persons at land and surveys, they they may have the they can be held in. Um, plans cabinets, and these plans cabinets would be outfitted with spacious drawers, of course, to, to accommodate such large items. Some government institutions, such as libraries and archives, also hold photographic media no, um, known as microfilm. And microfilm is a type of recording media composed of film on a reel with microscopic images, which are rendered visible via the use of a microfilm reader. And microfilm is stored in boxes within microfilm cabinets. So each of these um, different or varying record formats all have their own suitable and appropriate storage equipment. Okay, we'll now focus on storage enclosures. Storage enclosures are protective materials into which records are inserted to keep them safe from dust, mishandling, and pollutants. Some enclosures also provide physical support, and most of them are made from either plastic or paper. Examples of storage enclosures would include boxes in a variety of types and sizes. For instance, there are large document boxes, there are clamshell boxes, and phase boxes. There are also file jackets, maps and plans folders, um, CD cases, and microfilm or microfiche boxes. So just like we would have observed the storage equipment, um, there are storage enclosures that are suitable for various record formats. So now for such um, paper records as bound volumes or scrapbooks, there are acid-free drop spine boxes, there are clamshell boxes, phase boxes. Phase boxes would be those four flat enclosures and as well as book wrappers, such as um, press pan, which is an acid-free material that can be cut to size for wrapping books. And we stress the, the need for using acid-free materials, especially if you are gonna be holding your records um, for a long-term, you know, especially for long-term preservation, you would not want um, the whole business of acid migration going on. So you would seek to use acid-free um, materials for your enclosures. Now for oversized records like maps and architectural drawings, there are acid-free buffered map folders. 
for files, especially those to be kept long term. As I said before, they're acid free buffered file folders for microfilm. There are buffered card boxes for color or black and white prints. There are acid free buffered paper enclosures, as well as um, safe archival plastics, like things like polyester, also known as Mylar Type D or Milanex. Um, 516. Some other safe archival plastics would include things like um, polypropylene, polyethylene, polystyrene, and polycarbonate. All right, we are on the home stretch. Our final slide deals with optimal um, atmospheric conditions. And we conclude that paper records can be best stored at a relative humidity of 55% and lower and at a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Um, color and black and white prints are best stored at a relative humi humidity of 30 to 40% and, then, and at an amazingly low temperature of 2 um, degrees Celsius while microfilm is best preserved at a relative humidity of 20 to 30 degrees Celsius and a temperature, sorry, 20 to 30 percent in terms of the relative humidity and a temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Now, right, so those are the optimal atmospheric conditions there for the paper records, the color and black and white prints, and the microfilm. Following are the contact details of the archives department in case you need to speak to us with regard to, you know, any of the conservation queries, records management, um, you know, queries or whatever. So we're located at um, Black Rock St. James. Our telephone number, our PBX is 5350090. And our email, you can reach us at archives at barbados.gov.bb. Okay. All right. Um, up next, you know, is our question and answer se session. It was a pleasure presenting to you and sharing on best practices for handling paper based public service records. Thank you, Ms. Adams, very much for providing this very timely information that is needed for our public service. Now, at this time, all persons who may have any question for the presenter, you can put your questions in the chat box and I will get the moderator, sorry, get the presenter to answer your question for you. Now, Ms. Adams, we have some questions coming in, mm -hmm. and I will forward, I will tell you this question now. Is the banker's box made of cardboard? Is the banker's box made of cardboard, and does cardboard attract dust settlements? Okay, um, I know the banker's boxes are not um, acid-free but they can be used as well, because we mostly stress um, that you use acid-free boxes for long-term storage, but the, box, the banker's boxes are fine um, to be used. And yes, they are made, I believe they are made of cardboard. And I would say all boxes would attract the settlement. So um, you need to clean, as I said before, you need to clean the enclosures as well as the records because it makes no sense cleaning the records and then putting them back into dusty enclosures such as boxes or file folders or file jackets. Okay, thank you for that answer. Another question that is coming in, can you provide the name or names of good record cleaning companies you might have used? Yes, um, we can provide the names. Um, once you email us, um, we can send that information to you via email. We have two very um, good recommendations in terms of um, professional record cleaning companies, so we can send them to you. Okay, thank you for that answer. Another question that we have here, many of our buildings are air conditioned and there is very little ventilation. 
how can we be assured of effective cleaning? Okay, um, in terms of, um, this, this doesn't speak to record cleaning, this speaks to cleaning of the building per se. Well, okay, let me speak to both um, questions. Uh, yeah, well, just like the records need to be cleaned, um, the buildings also need to be cleaned. And I should also venture to say that um, the AC units need to be cleaned, you know, the filters and what's not, they need to be cleaned because it is a, you know, a, a all in one process, you, you need clean records, you need clean environment, and you would need also clean um, AC units. The, the records, of course, um, if, if records exist and are clean and in, exist in a dusty environment, you know, that kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, them being clean. So you need, you need that threefold um, process going on. Clean environments, clean AC units, and clean records. So that could only, um, you know, speak for a, a clean public service for our, our workers to to exist in and to do their duties effectively. Okay, another question that is coming in here. How should medical records be sanitized and who should do sanitizing and how often should it be done? Okay, um, medical records like any other records um, should be sanitized by professional record cleaning companies. We highly tout professional record cleaning companies because if, um, you know, workers say, say house cleaning, um, housekeeping staff of, or the, you know, the regular cleaning persons at the given ministry departments and agency seek to clean records, they may not do it in the correct manner. You know, there's a methodology for cleaning that the professional record cleaning companies would know about. Um, they're the ones that are highly um, recommended to do this type of cleaning. And we say, we had said once every six months, but not, no, no, no um, less than once a year. It is key that records be cleaned at least once a year. So you could be sure that, you know, um, you, you're not get the, you, you're not, you don't get the effects from dust, dust mites and all those type of things because persons have respiratory, some persons may have respiratory um, complaints and the dust, you know, make things act up. So to be on the safe side, you know, be sure to get records within ministries, departments, and agencies of government clean at least once per year. Okay, we have um, another question coming in. Records. How long, how long can records be safely stored before they start to break down? Um, I believe that, that, um, has to do with the material, the format of the record. Um, Paper-based records would degrade more quickly in very, very high temp at very high temperatures and humidities. Um, we would have stress, you know, 21 degrees Celsius, give or take two or so degrees. Um, but once they're in a steady, a relatively, um, you know, steady at a relatively steady temperature and relative humidity, and you don't have compromises in terms of if you have records stored in, in air condition conditions, um, environments that, you know, if there's warm air filtering in through, say, broken windows or, you know, creases in doors or holes in walls, or anything, you know, that would contribute to the wear and tear of records as well because it will create conditions that are that give rise to more growth. But I find that records, especially paper-based records, would um, are best preserved at lower temperatures. Right here in the tropics, we have we you know we, we face a bit of a fight with records. Some places may not be some places may not be air conditioned, but if you keep your records, I would say, especially away from, you don't seek to store records 
um, on the walls or um, under AC units where you could have drips and, and what's not condensation from the AC units to wet the records. You don't want to, as I said before, you don't want to place them on the walls because um, insect pests may run along the walls and seek to burrow in them and, and make a meal of them. You know, all those things contribute to the degradation and the gradual wear and tear of records. Um, if a room is very damp um, and, and moldy and what's not, you know, paper records tend to break down in those type of conditions. So you, you want to keep um, records away from being placed on the walls for, to, for insect pests to get at them, away from um, dripping AC units or any other type of water sources, and you want to keep them away from damp. So you want to make sure that there, there's no warm air compromising the environment where you have cool, cooler air from uh, an AC unit. So paper records should persist and thrive in, in, in environments that don't have those particular type of risks. Okay, thank you. We will have two more questions. Is it possible to digitally save all types of records as opposed to using full folders or boxes which promote dust, etc.? Okay, now with digitization, you would want to, to more preserve your active files or your current files, those files that are regularly used. So I don't think it would be wise to digitize everything. Um, so this speaks to the question that, you know, you still have to preserve your paper base or your hard copy records. You have, you have to keep them in good condition. You must clean them. You must keep them away from risk as mentioned before, like areas of damp, wetness, um, you know, that, those type of conditions. Um, so digitization is not for every single record, mostly um, current files that um, employees would be using on a regular day-to-day -day basis so they could be easily accessible. So we, we would be functioning then in a hybrid environment. You would have your digital records as well as your, as well as your um, paper-based record or your hard copy records. So it, there's no getting away from, to my mind, from paper-based records. You know, you, you have to preserve them as well as the, the digital records. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have a lot of questions now coming in, but we will not be able to take all of them. But I will give you this final question. Um, we have so much. I will ask two more. Has the recommendation of once per year or every six months for cleaning records being yeah. presented to the government. Um, someone is saying that they handle files that are in most cases over 40 years old. Okay. Um, well, when in the Archives Act, um, the Archives has oversight for records management for all the ministries, departments, and agencies of government. All right, so um, we are readily accessible to be called in to, to come in and consult the records to, you know, offer advice with regard to retention and disposition scheduling, um, with regard also to, you know, advising on the proper atmospheric conditions at which you should keep records for record cleaning and, you know, advising on the, the correct storage enclosures and storage equipment that records should be kept in. Um, right, records kept over 40 years. You would have to explore what type of records they are. But what you can do, um, you have our well, persons, well, the screen is up here with our email address. You could always email us and, you know, put your, your queries to us so that perhaps we can pay you a visit, the ministry department or agency in question, and you know, assist with your, your records management 
um, issues. Okay, thank you. The last question that we are going to have, what types of in-house cleaning, et cetera, should be done by departments to support the annual cleaning or in those situations where annual cleaning is not done? How can staff access training to maintain records appropriately? Um, well, at this point in time, we would, we would stress, we would more stress the professional record cleaning um, because if we have a, a bulk records may be, you know, there, there may be a lot of records may be voluminous. So you, you wouldn't want, you know, staff to be taken up from their duties, you know, to clean records or whatever. So we would make, uh, once you contact the archives, we can make available the record cleaning companies to you. But I can say um, what staff can do, staff of ministries, departments, and agencies of government can do their part in the preservation of records by not, um, you know, leaning on, writing on, tracing over records, um, be sure to store records. But if you're, if you're come, come, um, if you've finished with a, a file or whatever, it's good to put it back in the particular storage enclosure or the storage equipment. You know, this, all these things minimize the risk of, you know, the records needing constant cleaning. So once you, once you get your quota of at least once a year or once every six months, you're basically good to go. If not, this is the time to, to um, you know, to get that record, that professional record cleaning done. Okay, thank you very much for that question. Colleagues, as we prepare to wrap up, we would like to also inform you that we will have a continuation about digitization of records next week. So look out for that information so that you can register for that webinar where you will get information on what records you should digitize as we continue into the new technical technological age of the public service. So that is just something to keep in mind. And as you be wrap up, I would like you to just put in the comment, the comment box, what valuable learn, learning point you would take from the webinar today. We do not have any valuable learning points today. Oh, there are no coming in. Records should be cleaned at least once a year. Budgeting for annual cleaning is crit critical. Files should be cleaned. So we have persons taking the information that they receive this morning in this webinar. I'm very glad that you are taking away all of these valuable learning points from this webinar today. Ms. Adams, do you have anything to say well, before this, we end? Yes. Um, at this time, I would like to thank you at the Learning and Development Directorate, as well as all the participants um, within the public service, all of my colleagues um, within the public service for sharing in this webinar. You have made it a success. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, Ms. Ad Ms. Adams, for your time, for presenting to us today. I'm sure that everyone learned something today and they would try to, inst to institute it in their ministry, department, or agency. So colleagues, that's all the time we have for our webinar today. Please look for our follow-up email that will contain a copy of the recording of today's webinar for those persons who are asking about if the webinar was being recorded. Yes, it is being recorded and there will be a copy sent to you. And you will also receive a copy of the slides in case you miss anything in the webinar today. So on behalf 
of Ms. Adams, as well as the team here at the Learning and Development Directorate, we thank you for joining us. My name is Desiree Clarkstrand. I will ask you to please have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.